Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting edition of Something in Common, the program that explores the fascinating world of similarities. Once again, here are your co-hosts, Carrie Anderson and Terry Sanderson. Thank you. As you know, on this program, we're always searching for things people share in common. But we wondered about the suggestion submitted by Miss LaShonda Trent of Trenton, New Jersey. Our research took us to Fred's film located at the corner of 35th and Oakton, where Larry spoke with station owner Fred Fuller. In a world of self-service gas stations, we wonder how Fred Fuller's gas station could survive. Fred's film um, is a full-service gas station, the last of a dying breed of American pit stops. But Mr. Fuller isn't about to change his full service ways. Fred, what's behind your commitment? Um, see, the way I figured it, I can't afford not to give my customers full service. Could you explain more fully? Well, it seems like lately everybody's getting into sales service, but there are a few of us who believe by full service makes customers happy. Is there any particular reason? See, the reason I can think of is that a lot of folk out there just seem to need what we have to offer. So we try to do what we can to make the journey a little smoother. Over the hall, I think it pays off. Thank you, Fred Fuller. Occasionally, we find that some of our most revealing interviews on something in common are the result of sheer coincidence. While tapping another edition of this program, something crossed our set that seemed related to our topic. We immediately realized it had come from a nearby tennis court. We told the camera crew to keep the tape rolling. Here's what it resulted. Excuse me, but could this, could you possibly be looking for this? Why, oh, yes, thank you. I guess my backhand still needs a little work. Say, are you, like, Carrie Anderson and something in common? Well, yes, sir, I am. And speaking of that, I wonder if you would mind answering a couple questions, Mr. Capanelli. Peter Capanelli. Well, no, I guess I don't mind. Mr. Cabanelli, just how long have you been involved in this particular sport? A few years now. Oh, I used to just like to watch, but then one day I said to myself, Peter, you'd probably enjoy yourself more if you were actually out there playing the game. So I decided to give it a try, and sure enough, I was right. So actually, being involved was the key ingredient—the key ingredient for you. That's right. I'm curious about something, Mr. Campanelli. In your opinion, is there any one part of the game that's especially important? Definitely. And what might that be? The serve. If there's one thing I've learned about this sport, it's that just knowing the theory of the game isn't enough. And I've discovered there's no better time to put into practice what I've learned than the moment I shout service. I'm, I'm sure our Something in Common viewers have netted some sound advice here today. Thank you. Now, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is, of course, the address of the chief executive and of the first lady. But it is also home to another individual. He agreed to meet with us just east of the South Line. Excuse me, but are you the person who is to appear on something in common? Let's try to keep it down, but yeah, I'm your man. Oh, sorry. Would you please tell me, our audience, your name, and what is it that you do? Name's Doe. Jane Doe. Secret Service. Oh, I never who, no, knew who that was until now. 
I suppose that's only natural, though, though considering your job. That's why we're called the Summer Service. I can understand the secrecy in your line of work, but doesn't it ever bother you that people can't fully appreciate your service you're providing? Not at all. In fact, most agents agree that fanfare and order would only hinder their effectiveness. I assume this secrecy is encouraged from the very beginning of an agent's term of duty. Absolutely. Our manual states clearly that everyone in our rank is expected to adhere to the policy, and we always go by the book. Ms. Stowe, thank you for taking your time to share with us some of the secrets behind your service. Well, Larry, it looks like that all-important moment has arrived. Indeed it has, Terry. Of course, the moment we're referring to is that which we've set aside to prove that our featured guests do have something in common. But tonight we have a special guest to assist us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the person who first suggested tonight's feature, LaShonda Trent. LaShonda, we've seen and heard from three different people who, if your assumption turns out to be correct, have more in common than they themselves even realize. I'm sure of it, Kiwi. So let's find out. I've noticed an occasional comment during our interviews that seemed especially revealing. Let's recall a few. First, Fred Fuller of Fred's Film Up said he provides his customers with full service. Then Peter Cabanelli told us that victory or defeat is often decided the moment he calls out service. And finally, John Doe informed us that going by the book is essential to members of the Secret Service. All of which points to the fact that what these people share in common is service. Yes, the single thread that binds these different people together is service. And that wraps up this edition of our program. But before we leave, let's find out just a little bit more about our special guest, LaShonda Trent. LaShonda, your letter mentioned that the idea for tonight's program came to you while you were at work. Just where are you employed? I work for the Trencher Manufacturing Company. And what does that company do? We make a lot of different things, but our main item is plastic table soup. With that, we'd like to thank everyone who appeared on tonight's show. And until next time, this is Carrie Anderson. And Terry Sanderson reminding you that on this subject, Christians to have something, something in common. common. Brought to you as a public service of the station.